This is from Martin Luther, uh, who's the uh, you know, founder of the Protestant Reformation, which we are Protestants, so our way of thinking and belief came up out of the, the Protestant Reformation led by Martin Luther. So we go back, and, and um, he was excommunicated from Catholicism in 1520 for his position. You know, he broke away from, from the Protestant faith. Now, I'm going to read some key quotes from him that shows you his early writings and statements about God and the Holy Spirit, talking about this omnipresence. Now, something's going to shake you a little bit. I got a few quotes. Just, just digest it and, 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 and let's, let's work through it. Yeah, let's work through it. <laughs> Listen to what he says. Number one, and I just got to read paper. That's all we need today, but I'm going to quote it. Anyone today who had or has the Holy Spirit as powerfully as the prophets and apostles could create new Decalogues, that's commandments, or dialogue, and even to the degree of another testament. If you have the Spirit, the same way that the prophets, the, the prophets and apostles, which we do, then the same spirit that moved upon them, that inspired them with the word, will inspire you. And so the testament will continue to go on. So you'll be you writing a new testament. And this is where the doctor came about that we're actually uh, another testament being written and kept in heaven. That'll be read, you know, in the halls of heaven. But what 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 he's saying, suggesting here is he's not making a distinction because he he he, he He's saying that if the Holy Spirit moved upon them and inspired them with knowledge from on high that came from God, if we have the same Holy Spirit to the same degree, wouldn't the same thing happen? Ooh. <laughs> because God doesn't pick and choose. Now, so what he's saying, is, he's not saying that, that, that we would rewrite the Bible. All he's saying is that the same truth that they receive through the Spirit, we would be continuing to receive that truth. So then, greater revelation and more revelation will continue to be unfold about who Jesus is. It wouldn't contradict who Jesus is. It would continue to shed light on who he is. That's what he's Because the Spirit is a revealer of all of the deep things of God. Where well, everything of God hadn't been revealed in the scripture, Jesus said in John that there's some things uh, in Matthew's well that I would like to share with you, but you're not able to bear them now. But the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will continue to teach you or he will teach you. So we know that, that, that the dialogue between God and man continues through the Holy Spirit. So God's Spirit does talk to you today. The same way he talked to the apostles and prophets. It's just that we don't have to record it. We have a sufficient record. But the Spirit still talked to us the same. And that's what Luther. I don't have a portion of the Spirit. He did, and so he just said, if he, so if the Spirit rests upon us, which he does, in the same way, wouldn't the same thing happen? We would be as inspired as they were. Even though, we, and he said to the degree that a new dialogue, which was testament, would be written, which in another place, I think he talks about how that is written going on in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I do agree with that because the scriptures say that there are angels in heaven keeping record. So could that not be that they are actually writing this, another testament with our names going on, that those who are great warriors of faith and all are their names not being recorded and you and all of the, in heaven, in the, in, in, in the dialogue or, or the decalogue of heaven, the, the record of heaven of the deeds and all that's going on. And I think about that, I'm like, wow. Oh, oh, man. So, so, we making history in heaven. The testament, there's no testament still being written that God in eternity will bring before us. And so we will be read about as great warriors in eternity, in our day. And I'm like, oh, my God. Gives you another whole take. Hmm. But, but the, what he opens up is, that if God doesn't change, which he doesn't, and we have the same spirit to the same measure, wouldn't the same thing happen? And he goes 
want to say it is happening, but our theology has so watered this and changed this that it makes us to believe that God doesn't talk to us the same way he talked to the apostles, and that is totally contrary to scriptures because it, it defies everything that the Bible really teaches that God dwells. If he dwells in you, that means he's present to lead, to teach, to guide, to communicate, to empower, to educate, to enlighten. That's what we've been teaching, learning about the Holy Spirit all of this time. Mm -hmm. So it kind of goes back to what in Catholicism they did, that we kind of shift back into a, what Catholics, uh, the, 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 the Catholic faith were teaching. You know, we shifted back in that in that we we stopped teaching certain things to the people. And let that, be, that, that knowledge remain only for the ecclesiology of priesthood. And we keep certain knowledge away from the people. And that was, that's a part of the Catholic doctrine. You don't, you don't. And when Martin Luther rejected that, that's why we ended up Protestants. So if we're going to shift back to what they taught, we might as well always be, all be Catholics. That's what he broke away. Because they were saying that you were faithful to what he called your, uh, 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 your commitment to the sacraments of the church. In other words, if you pay your money to the church, if you give, you do all the things, and you're faithful in your attendance, and you partake of the Lord's Supper, your duty to the church constitutes your salvation. Luther said, that is a lie, that is not true. You are saved by faith in Jesus Christ. You are not saved by man. Your faithfulness to man is faithfulness to God. There's nobody between God and man but, 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 but God, the Holy Spirit. He said, that's not the truth. That's not Bible. And so that led them to come to the, the, the developed doctrine of indulgence, meaning that since we have the power to determine your salvation, and if you're going to sin, then you can purchase this potion and cover yourself with it for a certain amount of money, and your sins will be forgiven. And so they can remit sin. So what it ended up being is the wealthy had money because sin like they wanted to because they had the money to purchase indulgence to sprinkle for their forgiveness of their sin because it was left. That's what indulgence Mark, that's, that's This is what made Martin Luther furious that he broke away from. Mm -hmm. Because man had made himself, put himself in the way God teaches that. No, no, no. It's, I dwell in you. You come to me. Now you got a responsibility to your local church, do all the things. But but I dwell in each of you equally. In you. That's to get man out of the way. Because man, you know, it's always pollute something. So what we become as, as Protestants, and it's like we started to shift right back to a Catholic doctrine making our salvation connected to man rather than directly to God. And the way to get rid of that is to first get man to understand that you have the, the and I'm going to show this in a minute, you can, you, you, the same way that the Holy Spirit moved upon all, he's still moving upon the hearts of men today. So God does talk to us in the same way he talked to them. We're not recording this here because that we have, what we have is what's called a record that is sufficient for our faith. And we can read this and from this be inspired to believe and to receive so that we can learn the voice of God and he can continue to teach and direct us. But the whole goal is to get us into communion with God. So the first thing he said was that if we had the spirit, the spirit the same way they do, wouldn't the same thing happen? That we would in other words have, we could have the same decalogue, which is Bible, or dialogue. That's conversation. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that I'm, I'm, I, want, I want you to get to. That, that if, if, if I don't teach you this way, I will teach you to ignore the voice of God that speaks to us all the time. This is what's going on with the church. God is speaking to his people. We are taught to disregard it. Mm -hmm. To the degree that, that we struggle with, well, is this the voice of God or not? What if we were teaching more, they could quickly identify it quicker. But because we don't, 
we struggle and we question, is God speaking to me? And if you struggle there, then that would make you more dependent upon me. Now, listen, God put apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, all in place for you, but it ain't to hold, make you a prisoner. It's to explain truth greater to you. It help, you know, that's what he got. You got to always have teachers and everything. They help bring the truth. So that's the first thing he said. Now let me get to the second part because it's going to be a little bit more interesting. Let's go to uh, my open statement. The second thing he said, because I want you to see how he viewed the spirit of God. Now here's where I want to get to this, start moving toward this unmet presence and all. He says God through, this is Martin Luther now, in his earlier writings, when he broke away, he wrote doctrine and statements and all. God through his own divine essence can be completely in all creatures and in man especially. I'll read that part again. God through his own divine essence can be completely in all creatures. See, what he's saying is there is no time or space that God is not. Now, let me pull up before I go so before I go any further. That means that when we say things like, uh, uh, oh, God getting ready to come, the devil is on his way out. God ain't never left. <laughs> but see, that's our concept. God doesn't leave because the devil is here. He is so God that he's not affected or tainted or polluted by Satan nobody else. If, if, if when the devil comes, God is not there or leave, then, then God wouldn't be omnipresent. You're giving an omnipresence to God, to the Satan, or you're putting him on the same level with God. Listen to me. Now, I know we say it, and it's okay, and it, but tonight, tonight I'm kind of cutting some hairs, split some hairs here. So, if God leaves when the devil comes, well, the devil is always present. So, don't take that away. So, so like we can have a, a, a bad spirit about something even right now. That's the same present. So you're saying that God ain't here. Well, God here, how am I teaching? Your spirit doesn't affect my ability to teach because my spirit don't leave because you got a bad spirit. He don't really, oh, say in there, I can't go, I can't work in there tonight. That ain't God. He's omnipresent. He don't leave. So, so in actuality, you see how conflicting our teachings and doctrines, we, we don't even know it. I hope I ain't going too deep on you. Okay, but just trying, I know I'm cutting some hairs. But I'm, try, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get you out of that mindset that even if you're at a low point in life, God didn't abandon you. He cannot because there is no place that he is not. He never leaves you. He occupies him under, occupies everything. He said even on our worst days. Even on our worst days. You see, what we call that is it's simply death. When we're going through something, our minds are so distracted and aware that we just not intuit, intuitive, uh, 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 how's another word, intuit or uh, uh, we're, we're not in conscious in of his presence, or in tune or conscious of his presence. It's not because he's not there. It's just that stuff happens where we're not conscious of his presence. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't feel his presence because because I'm, 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 I'm right now, I got hurt, pain, everything else in me. So it's not because God's not present. It's just that I'm not conscious of His presence. Mm -hmm. So when I start to sense Him, He didn't just arrive. It's just that I got enough stuff out of the way that I can now know the, the God that's always there. Right. And one of the things we had to correct, we got to correct that in our teaching because we're messing up our young people. With this kind of understanding, because when something go wrong in their life, they feel like, well, God, and God ain't with me. He ain't answering my prayer. <laughs> see, see, and it's, your action now is based upon an understanding that God is no longer with you. When in doctrine, he, he ain't no place that he's not. And, and it's a big difference to know, no matter what's going on in life, that you are never without God as a saved individual. That's, that's, a, that's a mindset that we got to have. Because life can get rough at points. The devil can throw some stuff. But, but God 
that's with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If people want to come, I'm leave enough time tonight for we'll, we'll, we'll discuss a few things. Because we can talk. So God, through His own divine essence, can be completely in all creatures and in man especially. Now look what He goes on to say. He's in all creatures, in and in man especially. Look what He's going to say. Not when He say in man especially. He says, in man especially, deeper. So he's not only in all creation, he's in man especially, deeper, more internally, more present. This is Martin Luther. Then, uh, more present than the creature is to itself. Did you, did you? Mm -hmm. He's in man, more internally, more deep, more present than the creature is to itself. That means God is closer to you than you are to yourself because he knows you better than you know yourself. Yes. <laughs> in, in the, oh, God. Come on, lift your hand and say thank you. I just have to lift my hand. My hand. I got to lift my hand. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. That's what Martin Luther. That's what theologians are rewriting, getting away from the true teachings of how they talk about the Holy Spirit and the presence of God. Yeah. He knew what he was leaving. What he's doing. So he said. God is so present, so real, that he's closer to the creation than it is, especially man, than it is, than, than creation is to itself. Because he knows it better than it knows itself. He knows you better than you. So that means he's closer to you than you are to yourself. He knows your identity. He knows what's in it. He's a man more Deeper, more eternally, more present than the creature is to itself. Look what he goes on to say. And at the same time, he cannot be comprehended completely by anyone. Now he's closer to man than man is to himself. And we have his fullness because he can't be divided up. And at the same time, we still can't comprehend him in his fullness. So I have the fullness of God but I can't comprehend his fullness. That's the mystery of God. That's the mystery of God, the indwelling. Uh, turn to, uh, turn to uh, Ephesians right quick. Ephesians uh, chapter 3. Chapter 2, verse 22. Uh, 21, 22. In whom the whole building, that's the whole cosmos of saved people and all, the whole building, Jew, Gentile, everybody, are being fitted together, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. What is he talking about here? He's asking about like, you're not only being built for Jews and Gentiles, you're being built together, even with all of those in heaven, to one temple called the Bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. You are part of the building and the making of the Bride of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He calls it one temple. Because he talks about it. And Paul enough, they say, and in in, in, in you are a member in whom the whole creation, all in heaven and earth, is named. Part of the family of God. Mm -hmm. So you you are you are actually a part mm -hmm. of the overall bride, mm -hmm. which is the temple that Christ was married to mm -hmm. in Revelation. Mm -hmm. You are part, that's also called the temple. As we join to ourselves with that, mm -hmm. you are part of the building of that temple. Mm -hmm. That's those who've gone on in heaven. That's part of the angelic host, everybody, because it's gonna be one temple. 
you are part of that. You are being built together as one temple, and it's called a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. And God dwells in you even now, mightily, because you're part of that temple. Okay, that's just right there. Let's go to uh, three, because I want to get right here. Go to uh, uh, chapter three, verse eighteen. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the width, the length, the depth, and the height. And to know the love of God, well, I missed it, verse, uh, uh, verse 16, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, verse 16, 316, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. That, and twice, look what it says. Through, he strengthens you through his spirit in the inner man. He strengthens you, how? Spirit. His spirit of man. Okay, look what it goes say, verse 7. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. He says the same, it's twice, repeated. Both times he's talking about the indwelling of God. First he says, he approaches one way that God strengthens you. That's added to you daily by his spirit in the inner man. Yeah. Then he says, when you receive him, Christ dwells that by faith. So God strengthens you by his spirit in your inner man. And then Christ, then he dwells there through Jesus Christ by faith. Look how much he's talking about in man, in man, in man. In the heart of man. Martin Luther knew what he was writing. Well, look, it, it don't stop there. Go down to uh, uh, verse 18. That you may be able to come in with all saints. What is the width, the length, the depth, and the height? And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. That's that in, un incomprehensible part of him. You can never comprehend him in his totally, right? totality, right? That you may be filled with all the what? Because you can't divide him. You receive him, you got him in his fullness. You just can't comprehend it because he's, in, he's, he's uncomprehensible, incomprehensible. Yet you got him in his fullness because you can't section him off. I know it's a hard language when you search for words to explain it. So it's amazing to say that I got the fullness of God even though I can't comprehend it. That don't mean that I got a piece of God or a portion of God. I got all of God. Oh, Lord. Amen. All right, he said at the same time, you cannot comprehend him completely by the word. That was Martin Luther. Just one, two quick things. All right, this is all Zingli. Haldrich, Haldrich Zingli. He was a kind of contemporary of Luther as well. They were good friends at one time. They kind of fell out about some doctrine, but they're still good friends. Both were writing along the same line. Look what Zingli says. Now, here's my shock you a little bit. Now, I've, talk, I've mentioned this statement. God can give truth. God can give what? Truth. truth. God can give what? Truth. truth. Through the Holy Spirit to non Christians also. Non believers. You think because you don't believe God ain't that? See, they had a different take on who God is. What Shula said, we done messed up, we done created another image. That is not the God of the scriptures. Because in, in trying to explain him, we didn't do it, we didn't reduce him to a God that man can understand. When the truth of the matter is, we receive him, but we'll never be able to comprehend him. His ways are not our ways, as high as the heavens of the earth. So he said, God can give truth even to non Christians and unbelievers. It wasn't all believers that were born to the moon, build rockets. Because all truth comes from God. Now, how be it? Let me go and qualify and come and go you. He says, this is what we call rational truth, rational knowledge, mortal knowledge. Knowledge, scientific knowledge is mortal knowledge. I understand how the laws of nature work. That's still truth that's given by God, he's saying. See, he don't see that it's coming from the devil. He see that, that, that God gave us this ability. Mm -hmm. And even if I don't acknowledge him, it doesn't stop because he put something in us that's so uniquely different. That he can still give knowledge. He gives what we read in the scripture in Job that there's a spirit in man uh, and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. Rational spirit, Job 38. The breath of God gives him understanding or the wind of God gives him understanding. So he says that, that how be it, immortal knowledge of spiritual things can only come through the Holy Spirit which we cannot perceive without the Holy Spirit. 
But knowledge concerning gravity, how long work, scientific, mathematical, logical, God gives that to all men. He cannot interpret heaven. We need the Holy Spirit to move on us to reveal to us the mysteries of heaven. But that knowledge, that's spiritual. Yeah. No mind can grasp that. It has to be revealed by the Spirit. Right. But truth concerning rational, logical, scientific, all this is that is, is God gives to all men. That's, that's, what, that's what makes us different from all other creatures because we can think. We can, see, we can think. We got minds. Free will. So, so, so that truth didn't just come from the devil. All knowledge comes from God. And what he's always said, because people say, well, what about these folks who make us murder people? Well, that's us using knowledge in a, in a bad way. But you, because we misuse it, doesn't mean the knowledge itself is not good. God is still the giver of knowledge. We just have the ability to take it and use it for the wrong instead of for the right. And that's part of the free will of man. That he can use this God for the wrong rather than for the right. God can give truth to all people. That's a certain kind of truth, but it's still all. And th this is the reason why he said it. And, and I'm not giving you all the scriptures tonight. I'll do it next week. Mm -hmm. Because the spirit is present even if the word of Bible is not present. Mm -hmm. Just because I don't have the Bible don't mean God ain't present. Right. So as long as God is present, he can do what he will. Yes, so if the right. word not present, the Bible not present, God is still present. Yes. And as long as God is present, he can work, he can move, he can reveal. You see how we teach us stuff that ain't? So, so, no, 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 I'm going to go home with this one right quick. So, you walk around with a big old Bible in your arm. <laughs> don't mean you know no more of the word. I didn't mess with y'all. I mean, the first I say, I mean, how you first, you know, I first got called to preach and all. I, I had, you know, every family got a big Bible. And I, uh, I, I worked out in the room. Got a mom with a big, big Bible out there. And I stood in the mirror. I want you to look at hey, that big Bible. <laughs> I said, I ain't going to do this right here. <laughs> I put that back. I went and got me a record, but I'm like, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> ain't walking around school like, you know, long as mine. He's preaching right now. He ain't going to make you know no more God. I went and got me a record, good little Bible. <laughs> I was not going to be walking down the street with a big old white Bible. Because, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. But the spirit of the Lord is present even when the word, he said, so because of that, God can reveal truth to whomever, whatsoever he wants to, because there is no place that the Holy Spirit is not. Now, we'll use the word to confirm until we learn more. But once you begin to acquire and learn the voice of God, how many times God has said something to you that you may not have known was in the Bible and you later read or discovered or came to be? Yes. He's trying to teach you that once you know my voice, even if you haven't found it yet, I can still speak scriptures to you. Yeah. I can still reveal stuff to you. Yeah. And the more you know my voice, even though I hadn't found it yet, I know it's God talking because I've yeah. trained my ear to know it. Yeah. He don't just speak because you, you, you know, you know, sometimes you read stuff here, you don't understand it. Two or three years later, all of a sudden out of nowhere, the spirit comes and say, oh, and just start teaching you. And it's like, oh, that's what that meant. That's what God was saying. Years later, see, you were prepared then to receive knowledge concerning that thing. But that time that he speaks something way in advance. It doesn't stop him because you hadn't read it. That's right. All right. Because the spirit is present, even where the word and Bible is not present. Look what he goes on to say. Also, it was because the spirit is present, even where the word of Bible is not present. And also because the spirit works directly upon the human soul. Yeah. He's saying that the Holy Spirit, while it works to confirm it, it don't work upon this. It works upon your soul. Yes. He 
confirms and affirms all. But he works upon your soul. This is why I can read this word and everybody hears something different. Yeah. Or some folk can hear it and, and totally reject it because they're not allowing the spirit to work upon their soul. <coughs> he works upon the soul. Yeah. In other words, God works through his word, yes, but he works through the spirit directly upon your soul or your spirit. How you want work through the word, the web, but it's directly from you. He's in direct contact mm -hmm. through whatever means is, is direct. Mm -hmm. So God can set a word in a hundred of ways. You can read the scripture, word come. You can be praying, mm -hmm. word come. Somebody can call, word come. Mm -hmm. You got a million ways to bring your words. Mm -hmm. All of this is spirit work. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can read something you don't get it, and somebody calls and says, you know, I read something today, and God revealed to me, oh, that's what I was reading. Mm -hmm. See, see, the spirit working up on the soul. Yeah, he works on you. Yeah. 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 And the last one I'm going to read, this right here, and this is going to throw you a little bit again. Mm -hmm. That was uh, Martin Luther. That was uh, Zingri. Zingri. Mm -hmm. Here's the Jacobus uh, Armenius, where we get Armenian theology, and it's kind of Anabaptist theology as well. Look what he goes on to say. Talk about this, I'm, and I'm confirming, because all of these boys were writing in the same spirit and vein somewhere. He said, man has free will. All men, you got that, God help. And through what he called prevenient grace, that's something that God has given to all men. It's like a consciousness or something, a prevenient grace, a certain love. Through prevenient grace, and I'm going to explain that later next week. He has... Uh, Man has free will, and through God, that's God's prevenient grace, which he's given to all men. He, meaning man, he has the ability to hear the Holy Spirit. Listen to what he's saying. Listen to what he's saying. God gave all men the ability to hear his voice. <clears throat> prevenient grace is something that God has put in you. Because if you didn't have the ability to hear his voice, you could never hear his voice. So save or not, you must have the ability. And so what he calls prevenient grace is what God gives to all men. And he wasn't the only one that others talk about. Him. The ability to hear the Holy Spirit. And they can cooperate with God in salvation. This is called also synergism. <coughs> That's what they call that doctrine. Doctrine of synergism. Everybody does embrace that. Though he cannot save himself. Now, I can hear the voice, but I can't save myself. So he makes it. So hearing is not to be equated with salvation. Hearing is one thing. Salvation is different. So he's not talking about the man has the ability to save himself. Because he said he cannot save himself. That's accepting what God has done in Christ. But all, all me, agree with that ability to hear the voice of God. All. Otherwise, you could never get saved. Who going to say? Sinister, he's called it. Though he cannot save himself. This grace, look what he says now. This grace, that's preventing grace, that enabled man to hear God is given to all men. It is not that man can't or don't hear God. It's that they refuse to believe or answer the call. So this is how, in the day, <coughs> judge whatever, no man will be without excuse mm -hmm. because all of us have the ability. At some point, what he's actually <laughs> saying in life, every, all individual, at some point, will hear right. the voice of God. Right. And the difference is that, whether it be our background, our teaching, our conclusion, whatever, we refuse to believe, mm -hmm. refuse to accept, mm -hmm. but it's not that we did not hear. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, I come back to that free will thing. Yes. So that means that the non-believer, the atheist, the non-believer, at some point in this earthly life, yes. 
have heard the call of God. And I, 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 my, my oldest brother, who's, who says he's an atheist, and you know, he is, he is, I, I ain't here to argue. But I do know that I've seen him at times, in church, funerals, whatever, when a song started playing, uh, singing or something, tears running down his eyes. And the last time he got me walked out, I knew in my heart he heard God say, but he heard it. Yeah. That's what moved him to teach. Yes. Yes. We reject the voice of God because we'd have made up in my mind and ain't no God. But you heard it. Yes, right. The devil don't move you to tears. That was God speaking to you through a song or through a message. But you reject the truth hmm. because you decided in your mind is this is it nothing to this. But you heard something that moved you. Yes. What 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 what? Armenia said. That happened to every man at some point in life. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not that we have never heard. It's that, that we refuse to believe or to receive or to accept. But you have the ability to hear. And at some point you will hear. Though you reject it or refuse it. Now I know there's a side of theology that teaches also. That you can't even hear God except God draws you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's compatibilism, you know. That your will and God's will are simultaneous in all synergism is that we cooperate with God in the process of salvation. Capitalism is that we can't we, 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 we can't even do that. We're so depraved. And, and that's a part of Christian theology that teaches that too. Okay, you know, we ain't going to go to hell because we don't agree on everything. You know, but, uh, you know, we all got our school of thoughts. My school of thought, this is how I embrace it. And, and I'm going to give you why right quick. The reason why I, I struggle with that because they said uh, if God draws, if God be the one to call you alone, then then that means that God calls some and don't call others. Because, you know, I mean, if he's the one, in other words, if you can't be saved except God calls you, uh, what made God choose you and didn't choose you? And they say that but this is what could be fair to us. They say because um, if all men would hear, all men would then be saved. No, mm -hmm. no. But I agree, I agree with uh, Luke and the rest of them. No, we got free will. Mm -hmm. That's it. He made us a certain kind of way. Right. He, listen, he said, he, Adam, you're a perfect creature right now. I've set something before you, a charge now. Now, you don't do this right here. You All will be well. But now, if you choose to eat of this tree, and the day you do this, you're going to die. That's choice. He didn't have to. God didn't make him. He chose to. So men, men do, we, we do have. So, so God didn't damn him. He chose another path. So in, 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 in my struggle with that thought is that, then when it go, and the conclusion is, that God chooses some and don't choose others, but but He can't be held accountable because uh, that person, uh, how did how did he say it? Um, since they didn't know that they were saved and not choosing, God can't be held accountable because you, they they didn't know that you know they don't know any different anyway. But that makes God uh, the author of life for some and damnation for the other, mm -hmm. and that negates freedom of choice, and that is not, that's not the God that we right. serve. That's a constructive image. Right. No, no. God, I believe this. God died for all men, mankind. But all of those who received this will reap the benefit of his death. Not because his death was inadequate, but because you do have the choice. And though you cannot save yourself, what God gave you in provenient grace is at least the ability to hear his call. And now you can respond to it or choose a different path. But you all have the ability to hear and God calls all men at some point. Everybody's like, we hear God. That's, I, 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 I believe that with all my heart. I believe that with all my heart. So if the other side don't say, okay, we, we'll make it there. He ain't kingdom is our cause we all we he, we're not perfect in our knowledge. We're working with what we know and God what the spirit revealed.
maybe all of it, maybe it's not a matter of salvation. So we ain't gonna fight over it. You know, we ain't gonna lose out. Mm -hmm. But this, this, this is what I see. Mm -hmm. The way God gives it to me, I give it to you that way. Mm -hmm. And, and then when I tell you what I tell you, all, what I say all the time, you got a right to be a thief. Mm -hmm. Don't make me the sum total of your salvation. Search it out for yourself. 